will be the host. Okay, Jevin. Okay, fine. Good morning, Jevin. Let's Good morning, on. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I, Fatima Jevin, have the pleasure in being the host for the day. Let me welcome you all to this e workshop on peer mediation conducted by Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samiti in New Delhi in association with Gandhi and Peace and Nonviolent Studies Center, St. Jesus College, an initiative of the Department of English and Center for Research, St. Jesus College at Macklin. Before we start with the program, let me take the liberty to request all of you to kindly stay on mute. All queries and questions can be raised in the chat box. Thank you. Yeah. Peer mediation is defined as a type of conflict resolution based on a negotiating and mediation approach or a combination of both. It is a confidential process for, so for resolving conflicts. It is much more useful as compared to a common conflict resolution process. This mediation is usually carried out by students and for students. The need for peer mediation has increased because of the rising violence in schools and colleges. Formal peer mediation approaches provide training for chosen individuals to help them to intervene in disagreements and support the participants to reach an agreement. In general, peer mediators have a formal and recognized position. However, anyone can develop the skills to mediate in social difficulties and the skills are as useful for adults as for children. Now, I would like to move on to the welcome address. Dr. Veda Bliss Kundu, sir, is the program officer of Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samiti. He has done extensive work and research in areas of nonviolent communication, peace, and conflict resolution, media and information literacy, and volunteerism. He has been giving lectures and conducting workshops in these areas, both for institutions in India and abroad. He has also written extensively in these areas of expertise. With immense pleasure, I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Uh, should we start? Uh, I would, no, sir, I, I now welcome Dr. Preeti Kumar. I would like to welcome Dr. Lata Nairar, head of the department, Department of English and Center for Research, and the convener, Gandhi and Peace and Nonviolent Study Center, St. Jesus College. Welcome, ma'am. I now welcome Dr. Preeti Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of English and Center for Research and Coordinator of Gandhi and Peace and Nonviolent Studies Center, St. Jesus College. Welcome to the event, ma'am. Lastly, I welcome each and every student who has joined this session with immense joy and gratitude. I'm sure you'll, have, you'll all have something valuable to take from the workshop with you. I now invite Dr. Vedi Piskundu, sir, to begin with the session. Thank you, Jimin. Uh, a very good morning to all of you here from uh, Gandhi Smriti, New Delhi. In fact, uh, it is raining quite heavily out here, and uh, it has been raining heavily for the last several days and a uh, situation of denundation out here. Today's session, uh, a very good morning uh, to our very respected Lata ma'am and Smriti ma'am. It has been wonderful working with uh, all of you. Also, our team of the Gandhi Spreading the Centers, uh, Fatima, Maxwell, Slikda, everyone. Uh, and in fact, it is no show you have been able, you have been coordinating. And uh, as I was talking to Lata ma'am, that uh, you all need to work out on what exactly you are going to do on 2nd October. Uh, it could be an online thing, but what exactly you want to do as part of that. Let it be a student led initiative. Today's session is on peer mediation as Fatima rightly pointed out on the essence and what exactly is peer mediation. Gandhi, Smriti and Darshan Samiti has been organizing this whole workshop on peer mediation for schools and colleges uh, extensively. And one of the major overarching goal of this whole effort is how we can develop that mediation mindset among young people. Everyone of you in some form or the other uh, have in some way or the other intervened and say there is a small dispute here and there, you know, family or in your institution and how we resolve it. The thing is that to fine tune that and one of the outcome out of this whole workshop today, uh, I really at the end of the day, I would be sharing with you some questionnaire and possibly uh, it will be interesting if uh, all of you could work out uh, to work something based on those questionnaires 
and we can have uh, one of the idea which I thought uh, could be shared is that it's a Gandhi study circle could have a Facebook page and they can share those questionnaires and responses on that so that we can promote our culture of peer mediation. That is so important in today's situation. Uh, just now before coming, I was having a very uh, interesting discussion our, with our director, sir, and he was talking about uh, in some of the colleges and schools of uh, Bihar, how uh, you know a lot of violence is there and what can Gandhi Smriti do as part of our intervention. So it is getting increasingly uh, uh, very, very critical issue and each one of you have in you to further, you know, reach out to your friends and uh, give some training, possibly the Gandhi study circle uh, under the leadership of Lata ma'am and Priti ma'am with all the students, they can form a group and they can reach out to other schools and colleges of uh, Andakulam to have these kind of workshops there. It will be very, very useful and very important aspect, a very practical thing in today's world. Friends, uh, what we will do is we will run through this uh, PowerPoint presentation, but uh, my humble request to each of every student here is that it is going to be a fully interactive session. We are going to un un explore the uh, un un meaning and importance of peer mediation through this interactive session. So I would request for each and every uh, questions that we fr uh, frame uh, there should be very good participation and come up with your very interesting viewpoints. So let me start with this PowerPoint presentation. Is the presentation visible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. Okay, okay, fine. Fine, thank you. So, friends, uh, we start with this very, very apt quotation of Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation. What may appear as truth to one person will often appear as untruth to another person. But that need not worry the seeker. When there is honest effort, it will be realized that what appears to be truth, different truths are apparently different countless leaves of the same tree. Very profound quote we start with of the father of the nation. Well, friends, in this exploration on what exactly is peer mediation and how we can be a better mediator in our in different settings and different situations, uh, as, as I right at the beginning said that it will be more an interactive session than a lecture session. So we start with our first point of view here. Uh, please share your views. For each and every question that I'm trying to frame so that we can have a better understanding of the subject, uh, I would request at least two students to come up and to share their views. Please share your views on different types of disputes that you experience in your classrooms or educational institutions. May I, uh, it is open to the students, so two students for each of the questions that we frame. And at the end, we will juxtapose all these ideas and frame our whole understanding of peer mediation. So please, the first uh, participant, if someone could share their view on the different type of disputes that we experience in our classrooms and educational institutions. Yes, please. Someone, uh, Fatima, if you're uh, moderating, can you please uh, get whosoever is uh, going to speak, they can unmute themselves and then they can speak. Yes, please. The first respondent. And please introduce yourself. And we should have a very interactive session, lively session. Please. Can you hear me, please? Fatima and everyone. Good morning, sir. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. You're audible. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Please. That's right. So who will be the first uh, respondent to this question? What kind of disputes? So Max, good morning, sir. Respond. Good morning, sir. Yes, please. This is Max. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. So the 
Yes, sir. So uh, as we, we have online uh, learning these days, the mm -hmm. kind of disputes or the number of disputes are less. But uh, mm -hmm. I guess when we were uh, when we had offline classes mm -hmm. uh, and we were just out from school and we had uh, uh, we had disputes over very uh, petty matters, maybe like uh, based on the seating arrangements that mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we'll be seated along with our friends maybe sometimes if we mm -hmm. talk teachers make us sit somewhere else so uh, we students we, uh, i'm uh, doing my third year english now so mm -hmm. i had on offline classes just for my first year mm -hmm. so during my first year we didn't have a lot of disputes in mm -hmm. classroom in the classroom situation mm -hmm. but um, i think uh, what whatever disputes we had were around uh, such trivial matters okay okay Fine. But uh, sir, uh, not in classroom, but uh, I will be having dispute uh, between me and my brother always. Okay, okay, okay. That's right. That's right. Also, any any other person also you can recollect your school days. Uh, what kind of disputes that were having? Anyone else? I want each and every one of you to you know respond. This is your session, and we want each one of you to become a good mediator at the end of the day. Yes, please continue. So, are you able to hear me? Um, yes, please. Yes, please. Network's a bit a bit slow. Uh, so, hi, my name is Neha. Um, so, um, as you had said about the disputes which you experience in uh, classrooms and stuff. So right now I'm a uh, I'm a second year student. Uh, first year was fully online. So mm -hmm. there were a lot of disputes which happened uh, in in our personal chats itself regarding like suppose say if you want your participation marks or something, then uh, everyone would dispute over that like why are you speaking so much? Stop speaking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the disputes which I faced okay. during okay. the first and second year of college. Okay, okay, okay. So, Fine. Yeah. So many of you, uh, like you, Neha, you have not really experienced the offline experiences. Now it's almost close to going to be two years. So, of course, that is there. And the next uh, point of view, going beyond the educational institution, going to your friends, the socialization process. So what are the different types of conflicts that you experience with your friends and kith and kids? You see, our whole idea is to develop a very nuanced understanding of the conflicts and their types and how we uh, handle these conflicts in uh, different situations. So uh, can someone come up with their views on the type of conflicts? Some of them may be very small, but they do happen. Conflicts is an organic process. You know, if I say that I, there will be no conflict in my life, it is not possible. It's an utopian idea. There will be conflict. How we handle conflict, that is important. And that's how we are trying to talk about the mediation. Yes, please. Who will talk about it? Your friends? Please come up. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Uh, my name is Joita and I'm a second year English literature student. So the type of conflict that I've been dealing with these days is quite trivial. It's between like my friends from college and my friends from school. So okay. we, are, we are of the different opinions that, you know, I'm paying too much attention to maybe my college friends and not paying too much attention to my school friends. Okay. And okay. it's such trivial. It is a it's such trivial. Okay. Someone else is wanting to speak. Michelle. Michelle, yes. Michelle. Yes, Michelle. Or uh, Jovita is the same person, Michelle. Or different. Yes, please. Sarah, you want to speak? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
while Sarah is taking its, uh, her time, is there anyone else who would like to speak on that? Because from that, we will go to the next point. Please come up. I would request everyone to be very active in this online session because when we do just lectures, you listen, but here we come up with your own point of view. Please come up. Please be active. Yes, please. Anyone else? Uh, good morning, sir. This is yes. Sharmila. Okay. Uh, sir, the type of conflicts that I experience with my friends is uh, like uh, I am a bit uh, disciplinarian person. Mm -hmm. So mostly it happens like when I see some things when, it, when they are not disciplined themselves, like I tend to uh, tell it openly, like I ca confront them. So that's mm -hmm. the time we have a bit conflicts with my friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And uh, anything else? Anything else you would like to add into that? The same point. Uh, my name is Chitra. Like okay. uh, communication gap, misunderstanding the communication. Okay. That's the biggest conflict we are facing in online classes. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Fine, uh, we go to the next point, please uh, Chitra and uh, Shadina and Jovita. Like say for instance, a situation happens when you are in conflict, like say, uh, Shadina said that she, uh, as she is, uh, you are disciplinarians and because of that, there might, some dispute might happen because what she feels is correct, the other might feel that uh, it is not correct. So, uh, how, do you actually? I'm going to uh, uh, add uh, you know, this particular question and this particular question in general. How do you respond to the conflicts and how uh, these conflicts are resolved? We are trying to bring these two together. So, how do you generally do you yell at the person, chairman, other person when you feel that someone is, uh, you know, not uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing the things which you want? Or how, how do you respond in such kind of a conflict situation? Well, if, is there any mechanism you think uh, are there to resolve them? These are the two interrelated questions. So anyone can answer them, either Shandila or Chitra or anyone else. Please come up. Like, Sir, I how think do you respond straight away? First, first response, first reaction. Yes, please. Chitra. Sorry. Yeah, sir. I was trying to say that there's only one thing that is communication. To solve an issue, you just communicate and resolve it by mm. talking. That's the only one way, or okay. else it'll create a big issue. Mm -hmm. But 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 in case there is a issue, then how 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 you have been you know used to responding to it? So you yell at that other person, or you try to ignore to the other person, or how how do you generally do? Like instead of ignoring the issue, face it. Mm accept mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. then speak it out and tell them i'm sorry this is not what i meant and mm -hmm. yeah okay anyone else would like to uh, add to what chitra has said probably Shermila or any other student uh, uh, yes, uh, yes sir uh, there is another type of conflict that usually arises it's especially when we are planning an event or something and there will be people who would want to include some kind of activity, some who wouldn't want to include that. So in some cases, like it might be rare, but compromising, I think, can be an option to resolve a conflict or a dispute. Like sometimes maybe we can just give in to that other person's opinion. Rarely, mm -hmm. but yes, yeah, still I think that could be an option. Mm -hmm. So uh, when... Uh... One of the important things uh, can anyone talk about on uh, when we are talking of this disputes and conflicts, the small little things, and as uh, Chitra was talking about the importance of communication, or someone was talking about you know uh, you know trying to see how we will talk about that letter when we are talking about the issue of uh, you know uh, compromise. But in general, like in various workshops that we do, like. Uh, immediate 
uh, response to kind of a dispute or things with that, we will start yelling at the person if you don't feel that the uh, other person, uh, you know, uh, having the same views as the other, then you will try to avoid or ignore it. You, some of them said that you can change the subject so that uh, that can be avoided. Of course, one of the important point is how we can try to understand each other. Then also, of course, it is mostly not for you, but uh, mostly uh, in the school level when they try and go and for every small thing, they will go and uh, try to complain to the teacher or the parents or things like that. In worst case, you call the other person names, then, but also there might be a situation where you let the other person have uh, her way out. Then, of course, uh, you talk, as Chitra was talking about, talk to find out ways to agree. Possibly, if you think that you have done something wrong because of which the conflict has occurred, you could also explore whether you want to apologize or not. There are situations where you uh, people actually go and fetch back or push back. If some people could actually cry because of that whole conflict, or the other person could actually make it as a joke. So there are so many different ways how we react to a particular conflict. But the issue is that, uh, which I would like to uh, you to uh, uh, some of you to respond, when we are talking of the outcomes of the conflict, where well, you have a conflict, you have a dispute, and you have reacted in a particular way, and uh, you are thinking of a situation, uh, how you can resolve that. What are the outcomes? That is something very important we need to keep in mind. Uh, for you students here, uh, whether, you know, at the end of the day, whether you think if there is a conflict, you should win the whole thing, or you, uh, you don't mind losing it, or what, are, what, what do you think should be the outcome of such a dispute, even if the dispute, no, it has finished, in some way or the other, some form, you have talked over, you have done something. There are so many different ways of resolving the conflict. But the outcome is uh, what, in your opinion, you would be happy if it is you win the whole conflict or you will be so unhappy if you lose that conflict. Can anyone think of the aspect in the context of conflict outcomes? Here we are talking about the conflict outcomes. Yes, please. Someone could share their views, friends. Have you understood what I am wanting to say? Friends? Yes, so, sir. Yes, please. Yes, please. So my point uh, is that if so anyone can... Most, yes. most probably the outcome will be like, uh, maybe we might not talk for some time uh, because of this conflict. But still, we are all friends. So, okay, come on. Uh, like that, we take it in a good sense. And okay. we come back in a way. We come back. Okay. No, but uh, you say, for instance, Shamila, you have had a fight with someone. And you, uh, you, would you like the outcome to be that you actually winning? You know, you're feeling related that you have won over with that conflict situation. Now, friend has actually been, you know, she has not been, just been defeated in the whole way. Or, or you will be so unhappy that you have lost the whole game. So which uh, option do you think is the best? Yes, Shamina. Sir, in that way, I think uh, <laughs> I just keep quiet myself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You see, most of us, uh, it is a human tendency possibly that we think of a situation of a windows lose situation. No, if there is a conflict with someone, I feel that I, at the end of the day, of course, in whatever way the conflict is resolved, I should win, not the other person. And the other person will also like to see in the same way. And there lies the whole problem. You know, that actually creates greater pressure. That actually leads from a micro issue, you know, turning up to a much bigger problem. So, one of the most important aspects we should keep in mind as someone who wants to be a good mediator is that he, we should focus on the cooperative aspect of conflict resolution. That means working together with those in conflicts rather than you know a competition of who is winning and who is losing, and essentially look at a very 
uh, important aspect that is a win win situation. That is what we should keep in mind a win win situation. Well, uh, again, the next question for me is that how often, like we are talking, we were talking so far on at an individual level, I having a conflict with someone or some things like that. How often have you found a situation where, say, two friends are in you know, dispute and you might have you know, intervened and tried to resolve between the two? Is, uh, can anyone share their own experience on, in this aspect? How often friends come in between to resolve the conflict? Uh, if anyone can share from their own experience on this aspect, I'm sure you must have I... that. Yes, please. Not yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, yes, sir. So, sir, I was involved in the college union. So, okay. uh, college union involves a lot of decision making and you have to think about a lot of things. You have to arrange a lot of events. And as this time it, it's COVID, we had to arrange a lot of events online. Uh, mm -hmm. Majority of the events were online. So, we had a conflict over uh, a lot of decisions that's made among us. We were 13 members and mm -hmm. we had uh, we had conflict over many decisions that they made. Like my decision okay. uh, would be in contrary to the decision made by the other member of the union. So mm -hmm. uh, what I found that is that uh, uh, there were people, there were people of those members, those uh, people, students belonging to the union and also people in the union and they were very, uh, they were very uh, active, and they they were very keen to solve the uh, resolve the conflict that we had, mm -hmm. and they came in with a lot of you know, uh, sir. I had I have a such I have an observation mm -hmm. that is because of the online uh, online communication that we have these days, mm -hmm. the gravity of the problem or the gravity of resolution. We, we, we can't understand it because okay. as, uh, suppose if I'm having a conflict with one of my friends in an online uh, online uh, situation mm -hmm. and we don't know we, we I respond to calls or I respond to a chat but it's, it's all passive we don't understand the person's emotion but mm -hmm. uh, the many conflict that I had uh, a few months back with some of my friends uh, is that what I found is that it was not actually a conflict mm -hmm. but the situation um, and the online situation made things worse because we mm. can't understand what the other person is feeling. And mm -hmm. I, I have found that many of my, when we saw in the, the other, my friends in person, the situation got, uh, it, it, it went less, it, it, the situation was very, very okay. okay. So I found that, uh, you know, uh, the pandemic and the situation that we are having over phone or over WhatsApp, uh, taking, um, making things uh, worse, even our relations also, mm -hmm. our relations with our friends, our relations with our, uh, you know, even our parents, if you're, if they're abroad, you know, the, the, the pandemic is making uh, things um, even worse. So I found a lot of friends, a lot of friends who mediate in between, mm -hmm. and they want uh, us to be back in, okay. in harmony. Okay. So I have had experiences like that, sir. Okay. Uh, when my friends That's came right. in, when I had a conflict with the other okay. person. Fine, fine. So we will talk about it uh, further uh, in this session. Uh, is there anyone else uh, who can uh, rather the next question? Let us go. It is basically: Have you ever, as an individual, mediated between friends and conflict? Now this is a different question. Like whether friends. Come in between, yes, Max says, yes, definitely. And now, you yourself, how many of you have ever experienced trying to resolve a uh, dispute between two friends in conflict? Have you ever, anyone? I'm sure in the course of your school life and of course in the short college life, albeit this uh, pandemic, uh, probably in some situation or the other, or in your and near your homes in your neighborhood. Is there anyone who have actually involved in mediation, mediating between friends and partners? Is there anyone? So. Yes. Yes, Meha. Okay, so um, this is back when I was in eighth. So okay. um, used to have like okay, so eighth grade is basically like if you're in an all girls uh, class. There'll be a lot of drama involved. Mm -hmm. um, every every side, every turn you take, there'll be a, uh, any kind of conflict would be there. So okay. um, I had like a group of three friends. I was in like 
uh, that social that time. Uh, so, uh, three friends and two of them used to have conflicts almost every time about very petty things uh, from what I think now. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I, I had to resolve the conflict every time because like, and then um, like, it was about some petty thing, like suppose say, uh, she sat on my seat or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. So, um, I had right. to resolve that conflict and then it involved us bringing our language into it. So, like, so we, we were in English medium school. So, mm -hmm. um, because of that, and there were like language barriers between all of us. So, mm -hmm. uh, like one was a Malayalam, one was a Tamilian. So mm -hmm. I had to like speak in both so that okay. we would actually calm down and then become friends. But okay. uh, this never resolved. And yeah, to, to this day, they're still not friends. Acha, you could not resolve the conflict. Okay, okay. That's fine. Anyone else? Uh, people who are participants, students who have, haven't spoken so far. See, this is something which we, we are learning through this exploration. It would have been very easy if we had just had a PowerPoint explaining what is mediation and that's the kind of it. What is important is that to understand from the basics and understand the foundation of all these issues so that we can have or develop our mediation mindset. That is the whole idea. So anyone else ever, if any ever you have, you know, attempted to mediate between two friends in conflict. Have you ever come across anything like this? Anyone else, please? Sir? Yes, please. Uh, my name is Aishwarya. Like, I guess in school, whenever there's a group project, there's always going to be some kind of conflict. And mm -hmm. uh, one person in the group will have to hold the other people who are having the conflict together. So I guess everyone has had an experience being the glue in the conflict between two other friends. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, so, any specific experience you'd like to share? Yeah. Well, there was this issue. Uh, I, me and my brother, like, uh, are in the same class. So mm -hmm. when we were put together in the same group project, and me and my best friend were also in the same group. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of us together, I had to choose between both of them. Uh, mm -hmm. They were both having a fight about who should write something and uh, it became kind of a big issue and I had to okay. mediate between both of them. Okay, okay, okay. So how, uh, yes, I should ask, my further question is that, how easy or difficult it had been, you know, to try and solve that issue as a mediator. Now, we're talking in the terms of a mediator. At that time, obviously, you never knew that there was something called a term called mediator. So. Uh, how easy or how difficult was it for you to be a mediator at that time? Can you please? It was it was pretty difficult because uh, one thing uh, is he's my brother, so I can't offend him, and she's also my best friend. So I wanted them both to calm down just for the sake of the project. If after the project, they can do whatever they want, hate each other, do whatever. But for okay. the project, I wanted them to at least come together. I I think still now, like my brother hasn't forgiven her for something and he still talks about it he's like oh that girl she did that to me and all that mm -hmm. and yeah okay 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 also here uh, friends uh, that brings us to an important aspect when we are talking about conflicts or disputes that is the uh, you know the link it's linked with the values uh, like uh, i remember i think what shermina or someone was talking about uh, being a uh, strict disciplinarian and that is of value and because of which uh, she could have some kind of conflict with the other. So, in fact, uh, actually what happens is that that is again an important aspect why sometimes conflicts or disputes happen. Like what I think is correct might be wrong for the other person. It's all, you know, the differences in values. And how do we express these values? How do we express, you know, think about these values or perspectives? Everything boils out to that, and these are many times uh, result uh, results in conflict. Because as I said, like if I think this particular value is correct, and I feel the other person is not adhering to it, or the other person is having a divergent opinion, so then that actually starts, uh, you know, the conflicting, uh, you know, 
the, the seeds of the conflict uh, are sown over there. Also, what happens is that we, there are different kind of factors that form these values, like you know, cultural uh, experiences, your own personal experiences, your neighborhood situation, family experiences. So many factors which form our value system, and we all come to a particular classroom. It is a uh, you know, uh, it is a melting pot of different kind of cultures. So when we are coming from different cultures, from different backgrounds, different ideas. Uh, so there are bound to be differences in values, but how we uh, respond to those situations is something we need to learn over a period of time. Also, that come, uh, brings us to the question when we are, say, for instance, I think that I'm uh, disciplinarian, whether uh, these are pointers which I'm giving to you to think and uh, to start having some kind of a reflection. How is it easy or difficult to possibly, you know, force someone to give up their values and uh, probably adopt the values which I am uh, thinking? Is it possible? Is it not possible? These are so many important points we need to keep in mind because we are trying to become people who are having or developing the capacity to resolve conflicts, conflict competencies. We are developing our conflict competencies at this stage. And these are very, very practical issues we need to keep in mind when we are trying to develop our or enhance our conflict competency. So we come to this important aspects with all the views that we have found so far with all of you that when there is a dispute, as these are there, you will find that say if two students are in conflict, they will come and tell their own story. Also, there is a negative communication. There is a negative frame. So if, for instance, Ashwarya is sharing her uh, story of the school days of her brother and her best friend, so each one of them will have their own story to tell and which has resulted in that small little dispute. There is a negative frame. There is a breakdown in communication. So the whole that is that is the underlining factor why the dispute has happened. So our goal now here to look at some of these issues that you have been talking on. You have all pointed out on the different forms of context that you have had in your school days and in your college situation. Maximin was talking about the online disputes that you were. So in general, what are the different Possible reasons of context. We talked about the values, the value system. There are history and relationships. Very important. If there is a history of, uh, you know, uh, someone being having a behavioral problem, or there is a problem of relationships, that is one of them. Information. Sometimes we indulge, we get into a fight with a uh, with a friend or a classmate because we might have some wrong information about the other person. And because of that, there is a miscommunication. You see, all these points, if you start reflecting, you will feel that these are something which has happened with us in some point or the other in our lives. Then power of influences. You know, if there our uh, elder brother or elder sister or our best friend is saying, you know, this, uh, if she had a fight with the other person and uh, that person has, this, this friend of yours have a great influence on you, so your whole perspective for the other person starts changing. Power of influence. How powerful, powerfully you're influenced by, say, X, Y, Z, and that actually results in having a dispute with the other person. Then there are structural factors. And we have talked about the beliefs, values, and attitudes. How, what is our attitude? One of the most pivotal points in this whole aspect of context is communication, and uh, I think uh, Jovita had already, or Chitra, Chitra had talked about the breakdown of communication. Communicate. It is the key because how we communicate is something very important. Actually, as when we are talking of non-violent communication, one of the first tasks that we do is that we talk about the, you know, the word. Our communication actually can strengthen a relationship or results in the breakdown of relationship. So communication is something very, very important. Emotions, 
and procedures. Procedures is of how we handle that particular conflict. How what kind of forms we do to handle this conflict. So in general, there may be other reasons, but these are in a nutshell some of these important aspects on why the particular conflict happens. Here is a breakup with a beautiful quote of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. The very first step in non-violence, in fact, we cultivate in our daily life as between ourselves, truthfulness, humility, tolerance, loving kindness. Well, friend, we have talked about, Ashwarya talked about how she was trying to help in and she said possibly it was not a very easy job to, uh, you know, solve that whole uh, problem with uh, her brother, between her brother and her best friend. Let us now come to this brass track of the whole idea of mediation. As we all know, it is a process to resolve the conflict by involving a third party who is seen as underlined neutral, extremely critical neutral. It is a tool that helps to bridge the gap between differences. Differences between, say, Aishwarya's brother and her best friend, and she's trying to bridge the gap between the two. Most importantly, is important is neutrality, the essence of neutrality. Here, there is another breaker with this beautiful uh, quote of Henry David Thornier. As a single footstep will not make a path on the earth, so a single thought will not make a platform in the mind. Very profound statement to make a deep physical path we walk again and again. So to make a deep mental path, we must think over and over the kind of thought we wish to dominate our life. If we wish to think that uh, negativity should dominate our lives, that is a problem. So what we need to do is see how we can ensure that positive thoughts dominate our life. Very profound statement. Well, friends, now let us get into this whole prospect of mediation. Two of your friends call you to help in us resolving a dispute between them. Why do you think they want to have you to resolve the dispute and not the other person? Well, I think uh, since Aishwarya had some experience, can Aishwarya, can you please uh, uh, share your views on this particular thing? Say so two of your friends have uh, calling you, they are having a conflict between themselves. And why do you think they want to have you and not say Meta or uh, Maxilin and others to come in and resolve that dispute? Can you please share your views on this? Aishwarya? Yes, sir. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe like another third person's opinion or a viewpoint would help them decide who is in the wrong and who is in the right. No, uh, my question is that see, uh, two friends say, for instance, I will. The, uh, uh, our friends were here. Say, Megha and Chitra are having a conflict. So why should uh, they call Aishwarya and not say Maxine? I'm just giving hypothetical examples here. Oh. Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh -huh. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure how to answer that question. Okay. Is that I guess... okay. Am I, am I that friend? Like, am I that mutual friend who knows their story and why they no, are having it? Chitra story? is also, say, say, Maxine is also a good friend of them. So why they would call you and not uh, her? Okay, so any... uh, assuming that Maxine is their friend and I'm just, no, I'm not their friend. So they're they're probably calling me so that I wouldn't involve my emotions in there, and I wouldn't I would look at it from an unbiased point of view and give a really objective opinion, maybe. Okay. So then, nice. in that case, uh, I wouldn't judge both of them, I, uh, like either of them. I would just give like an objective opinion on what they should do, and maybe they can take that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone having any other? Uh, views on this. Anyone would like to also share their views? What I swear you was talking. No. Okay, we go to the next one. What I sh just to take forward what I swear you was talking on why say the two of her friends should call her and not the other. What do you think are the key characters 
<coughs> of a student mediator being requested to mediate when two friends are engaged in a dispute. What are the key characters? Can anyone um, list some of the characters? Why you? What are the traits in a particular student because of which, uh, say, two friends in a dispute they are call, calling that particular friend? Is there anyone who would like to share their opinion on this? Yes, please. The person might be a good communicator. Okay. And he might be good listener with the capacity of uh, judging, actually to listen and uh, resolve their conflicts. Okay. Okay. Fine. We will talk or about maybe it. It can yes. even be that the person might have an experience in this field, They're like mm -hmm. in field in a sense, like they might have go through, uh, had a conflict between their friends and they kind of solved it. So they might know how to solve this. Okay. Okay. It might be because they understand better. You know, you understand your friends really well. Okay. Okay. That might help in conflict, resolving conflicts. Okay. Fine. So we will uh, then assimilate all what we are, you all are saying into those pointers. But before that, uh, let me point out this Ghanaian pillars of non-violence. Because you see, as I said, uh, conflicts are part of our life. It is organic in nature. What is important is that, that is how we handle these disputes or conflicts constructively. That is something very important, whether in our college, whether in our homes, whether in our neighborhood, in the society at large. And one of the important aspects would be using this uh, Gandhian pillars of non violence. You see, the first and foremost is respect. You see, when we start, much of the problem that happens is that possibly we may not have respect for the other person, and because of which the conflicts or the dispute happens. So most important is that if I respect you, it is most likely that you will respect me. So respect is something very, very basic. Let us try to, you know, make it into a habit, make assimilate it as part of that, that we should respect each other, we should try to respect everyone. That is something very, very important. And friends, when you start respecting, when you have that innate quality within you, it will be much do uh, it will be very helpful it will be very easy to understand each other because obviously each and every one of us have a different point of view but here when i respect you you may have a different point of view i will be in a much better position to understand your point of view so that is something very important so respect leads to understanding and when i'm able to understand your point of view it will be much easier to accept each other's point of view you see, much again, much of the problem, much of the disputes happen when I'm not accepting the uh, point of view of the other. There is a problem of quote unquote ego. I feel what I have said is correct, what the other person has said is wrong. But if there is respect, if there is a deep understanding, it will be much easier to overcome our ego problems and accept each other's point of view. The next important pillar is the appreciation. Again, very important. Yes, we saw in the first, uh, previous quote of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, when we are talking about the thoughts, what kind of thoughts we wish to dominate our lives. In today's situation, as we are all into this whole mad, uh, you know, race for various goals and, uh, you know, eminent men, so on and so forth, many of us are, you know, encompassed with negative thoughts, negative energies negative communication right in the morning we open the whatsapp there are negative news so much of negativity and that's possibly many of us have forgotten to find or appreciate the positive things that are happening with us what is important is that we must learn the art of positive appreciation if we are able to appreciate the positive things say the beautiful flowers outside when we are say if we are sad if we can see at those beautiful flowers it calms down our anger. So positive appreciation. And when we are thinking positively, when our thoughts are positive, then there will be positive energy and we will be able to communicate positively. Very important in compassion. We must learn the art of compassion. 
learns the skills to be compassionate, he understands the suffering of others, and that helps him, you know, being able to resolve much of the problems or conflicts that happens in our life in a more meaningful way. So, friends, please remember these five pillars of Kandian nonviolence. So now we try to you know assimilate which Fatima has talked about, Chitra, Shamila, everyone on the different competencies on why say uh, say our friend Aishwarya was uh, is to be invited to probably solve that uh, dispute between the two friends. First is the ability to control and transform negative emotions into positive ones. Because I think Chitra only talked about the issue of emotions. So ability to control and transform the negative emotions into positive ones. The second is ability to bring hope and positivism in mediation. Say, for instance, actually I is invited and she is very negative in her approach. Then what happens if that the two friends already there is a negative frame, negative communication. If she is also negative, then it will, you know, make the situation worse. But if she is hopeful, yes, something good will happen. If she brings positivity between the two conflicting friends, it helps in the process of mediation. Also, very important, the ability to bring a climate of safety and trust. Why I uh, say two friends would call Aishwarya? They feel they trust that she is someone who will bring safety. Like sometimes, you know, if two conflicting parties are there and uh, they don't want to share things with the other person because they don't trust that person. They feel unsecure. So it's important aspect, say for instance, our friend Aishwarya to be a mediator is that she uh, is able to bring a climate of safety and trust. Ability to face emotional dissonance. There will be a lot of emotional, someone might cry, then someone might have different emotional issues, but she should be able to be firm to listen to both the points. Ability to maintain neutrality at all points of time. Extremely important, you know, fairness, unbiased. Why someone would call the other person to be there? Because that person knows that you are neutral at all points of time. You are not taking side with the person A or person B. So these are something very, very important points to be kept in mind when we are talking about developing our mediation mindset. Friends, uh, in fact, I can tell you, many of you have that uh, ideas of mediation, but how to train, how to solidify that mediation mindset is our goal. And I think the more you, the we talk about it, the more you reflect on that, you will be able to develop your skills. Of course, in one day, you can't become a good mediator, but it brings the beginning of the thing. And I think more activities we do, we will be able to uh, frame our ideas to become better mediators. Also, that brings in the most important aspect on how a person can be a successful mediator. A person needs to be friendly. The person wants to help others and care about others to resolve their conflicts. Very important. You're trying, say, for instance, again, taking the example of Aquarius, she has to try to help the two students who friend of hers to see positivity in their relationship, to positivity in the conflict, to transform that conflict into a positive relationship. And if she is able to do, she is a successful mediator and cares about others resolving their conflict. And she has to be impartial and does not take sides in the conflict. Another very, very aspect of media, peer mediation is you have to be a good listener. What is important is that the listening skills, the person who is talking to you, that person might have a lot of issues, a lot of emotion, but you must do not just your verbal communication, but also your non-verbal communication, your body language, should show that you're actually deeply listening to the other person. Also, please keep in mind that if you're trying to mediate between two friends, you have to take everything in facts, bring together all the facts. Also, you must show empathy, trying to put yourself in the shoes of others and try to think why that particular friend of yours might have behaved in a particular manner. It's always possible. 
you know, sometimes because of our unmet needs, some of our needs are not fulfilled and we get disturbed and we start behaving in a particular way. And there lies the problem and that leads to a conflict with the other friends. So if we are empathetic, we will be able to develop empathetic connection. Also, a good mediator knows when to be a leader, how to lead the two conflicting friends to a very positive outcome. Win-win. So Remember, it has to be we should focus on a win-win relationship and not a win-lose relationship or a lose-lose relationship. Win-win, so that both parties in some way or the other are happy with the outcome of the conflict. So, here, uh, my question here for all of you is, what do you think, we have talked about the uh, you know, positive aspects of a good mediation, the competencies that you need to require, how a successful peer mediator should be, but what are, do you think are the characters which not help a student to be a good peer mediator? Now, we are talking about it. What do you think are the characters which not help a student to be a good peer mediator? Can anyone answer to this? Yes, please. Anyone please? Yes. Sandra. Yes. Continue, please. Please unmute yourself. Please. Sir, yes, please. Uh, maybe not being a good listener or interrupting okay. both participants while they're speaking. Okay. That's right. Then, any other point? Well. Sir. Yes, please. Being a pessimistic person, always finding out the negatives when they are when they are conf when they are having a problem, and always trying not to understand situation, not, not being empathetic and compassionate, is also not a good quality for a student to be mm. not a good mediator. That's right. That's right. Perfect. You're perfect. Well, let us encap encapsulate which you and Hrithika had talked about. So the peer mediator is should not be a disciplinarian. If you are a disciplinarian, if you think that you see it is a friendly thing, you are trying to build bridges. But if you are disciplinarian, no, you have to listen to me and not listen to the other conflicting parties. Well, it can never be a mediation. You can't be bossing around. Very important. You can't be a judge. Here it's there is a difference between a judge and a mediator. The judge is looking at giving some you know, order, giving some uh, judgment, but here you are not judgmental. You are trying to bring the two conflicting parties together, try to solve them through a cooperative, collaborative uh, mediation process. You should not be a gossip monger because you need to be trusted. You know, if you, if two friends are there and you are trying to mediate and you go at tomorrow and tell the other friends, well, these are the things that were happening. So then who will trust you? No, not at all dishonesty. You need to be honest to yourself and honest to the friends with whom you are there. And most important is you should not be untrustworthy. Very, very important. So these are the important characters you need to keep in mind that you should avoid in the mediation. Well, friends, when we are talking about mediation in the college environment or in the classrooms, how it helps? It helps in encouraging a cohesive classroom. It will promote cooperation, promote trust. It will help in group interaction. Students are encouraged to adopt non-violent conflict resolution strategy. So all these processes actually are now trying to develop a aspect in which how you can use these tools to become a good peer mediator to resolve many of the small little petty disputes which might be appearing now and then. Also, it helps in self-regulation. It helps in promotion of self-esteem, self-discipline. Also, it is very important when you're developing this mediation skills to transfer the mediation skills in different situations in families, neighborhoods, and educational institutions. It also helps in promoting critical thinking and decision-making abilities. 
think of a situation where you are trying to bring the two of your conflicting friends together. So you are thinking, it's a critical thinking you have to do, rational thinking you have to do, to see how you can bring the two conflicting friends together in the same way and try to understand your point of view so that there is a win-win situation. So also important is decision-making ability. It helps healthy relationship within the educational institution. In fact, now what we will do is we will try to see, say, for instance, again, going back to our friend Aishwarya, you know, uh, who is called upon to resolve the uh, dispute between two friends. What could be in general? There are, of course, there are so many different ways in which she can do to see how she can resolve the dispute between the two friends. But in general, which has been used in different settings, in different ways, are that first and foremost that she should be ready to mediate. Sometimes you feel that both the friends are too close to you and you feel you will not be able to do a you know, neutral job, so you uh, re uh, regret, you will, you will say, no, thank you, let us find someone else. But you should be agreeing, you should agree to mediate. Then your work starts. And when your work starts, you should be able to gather the detailed point of views of both the friends with whom or groups, with whom different groups are involved, detailed understanding of their point of view. It could be in both ways, that would be focusing either you have an individual meeting with both the friends or you bring them in the same platform. It could be like you first talk to both of them separately and then bring the two together and ask them to share their point of view. But you must have the facts and figures ready with you. Then focus on the interests and needs, because as I said, it's, it's all issues related to needs. Sometimes my unmet needs are there and because of which I am probably behaving in a particular way. Also, what are my interests? So focus on the interests and the needs. If we are able to critically understand connecting with the needs of others, if we are able to connect with the needs of the others, it will be much easier to understand. What is uh, the ingenuity of a good mediator, as I said, lies on how we can create our win-win solution. Also, it is important how we evaluate the different options, you know, for the resolution of that particular dispute. There may be so many different options, but which is the best option? <laughs> a win-win situation. Idea is that you are not a judge, as I said. You, are, you can't be judgmental. You are not passing an order. You are a mediator. You are bringing the two people together and they should agree to the solution. You are not going to be giving them the sum or not. No, this is what I said should be followed. No, not at all. So what you have to do is you have to create some kind of an agreement between the two friends so that you know there is a win-win situation in place. Also, you have to promote this whole uh, atmosphere of participation. At the end of the day, you can't do anything unless and until both of your friends who are in conflict, they participate in the discussion, they participate. They're critically committed to resolve the dispute. So participatory method is very, very important. Also, as I said, it's so important to develop your listening skills. Again, the most important for everything in this mediation process, you see, the process and how you do it. Say, for instance, again, I'm giving the example of an Australia. How she does it, you see, when we are talking of mediation, that is basically, uh, you see, 80% your communication skill and 20% your uh, ability to uh, the process how whether you follow the right process or not. So the ingenuity of a good mediator lies on your communication skill. So when we are talking of a good communication skill, you must develop those skills of nonviolent communication. In fact, in a letter session, we can have a full-fledged session on nonviolent communication. I think we, uh, I'm not sure if we had a session with your student. Uh, did we have a session on nonviolent communication with all of you? Maxilin? Yes. Or anyone else? Uh, uh, did we have a session on the violent communication so far? 
Anyone? No, sir. No. So, uh, when we are talking of impact, uh, some time back I was talking to a senior uh, Australian mediator. It's not just for college or school mediation, but any kind of mediation. We said 80%, the success of the mediation lies 80% on communications and 20% in the process. So, we must understand and develop our skills of non violent communication to be able to understand better. So, these are certain important points we need to keep in mind. And of course, we need to do more activities, more ideas to develop a greater understanding of mediation and how we can do it. Well, friends, I will be mailing you this questionnaire. This is a questionnaire uh, there. And the idea is that you can we think of, I uh, know now the ideas should come from you. What kind of, what would be the important outcome of this workshop? Because everything needs to have some kind of a favorable outcome. So we are doing some exercise and what can be the outcome? These are certain questions which I give to students and they make an essay and they share. But we can, can we think of some creative ideas to, uh, you know, to ensure that today's session becomes more fruitful, more useful? Something creative, like say, for instance, if you are having a Facebook page, uh, we bring in something very there. So uh, we can think of that. Also, we can make some posters on the subject and probably a drama to promote school mediation. We can have an online students conclave on peer mediation. There are so many students are also working with students say, in Nigeria and other countries. So we can have this online students conclave on mediate, peer mediation where they come with the different ideas and different things. So uh, I would request uh, our Gandhi Study Center, uh, study, uh, study, uh, center uh, uh, students to come up with ideas, other students. So we, if we can have some concrete ideas which will help in. Uh, you know, taking this whole initiative forward. It can't, it should not be a one time activity. So we end this uh, workshop before we have this question and answer with this beautiful uh, quote by Paulo Freire, because uh, one of the critical things when we are talking about communication is dialogue. So when there is a dispute, we should focus on dialogue. So only dialogue which requires critical thinking is also capable of generating critical thinking. Without dialogue, there is no communication. And without communication, there cannot be true education. So friends, now we can start uh, our question answer session. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe, uh, I think that there was a message from Maxine that it is raining heavily here, uh, there. So, I can understand uh, the network issue just now. It has stopped training here in Delhi. So now uh, the floor is open for another 10 15 minutes. We can have some uh, ideas on how to take this whole initiative forward, not just in your college, but say spread it out to other adjoining colleges or schools and other creative items. Thanks. Fatima, please take over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for those wonderful words. They were extremely informative and inspiring. I now request the audience to clear their doubts and queries. You can either use the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Also, anyone can share their views on what they think of this session and uh, would they be interested in more uh, focused uh, session on peer mediation after this? So please come up with your own ideas. Sir, I would like to ask a question. Uh, yes, please, please identify yourself, please. Uh, sir, this is Jebin. Okay, me. yeah. Yes, sir. Has online education worsened peer mediation and communication? Has? Online education. Has that uh -huh. worsened peer mediation and communication? Do you think so? Well, you see, uh, when we are talking of online education, as uh, I think uh, uh, Maxwellen was talking about various conflicts and disputes they have in the online mode. 
Uh, you see, internationally, there is this whole uh, framework of online mediation. So that is also possible, but here it has not evolved. And of course, in the context of peer mediation, it may not have to happen. But I think, but I think with online education as possibly because you're not meeting face to face and all, possibly there might be, there will be conflicts and disputes, but are totally different time. But you see, uh, the thing is that when we are talking of peer mediation, it would, uh, you know, uh, be appropriate for all situations, whether it is offline or online. But uh, the more we inculcate some of these skill sets, we will be able to handle uh, situations in every settings, whether it is offline or online. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Anyone else? Any feedback on? Sir. Yes, please. How can we apply Gandhi's non-violence method of communication in violent attitude? And uh, can you be louder, please? Sir, uh, how can we apply Gandhi's non-violent method of communication in violent in atmosphere? Well, I think uh, when we are talking of non-violent communication, of course, we are committed to have a full fledged section on Gandhi's non-violent communication for all of us. But you see, when uh, you, you think of a situation, if say there is a conflict or, uh, you know, a dispute, and there, uh, it has taken shape in a very aggressive way, if we also become aggressive, it will be further, you know, it will boil down to further aggressiveness. So, what is important is that you use those different strategies of non-violent communication, say, for instance, you know, uh, trying to engage with your opponent, trying to be more open, trying to be more flexible. So those are the aspects that we need to use those strategies in trying to resolve those issues. Because at the end of the day, violence leads to more violence, and that will becomes a big problem. So in that context, we need to use, need to, understand the different aspects of non-violent communication um, to make it better. That is a very, very important aspect. So uh, we need to look at that whole thing. And uh, in fact, when we are talking of use of non-violent communication, that is a very, very important uh, aspect on how we can use it for resolution of conflict. You see, the whole idea is that we are talking when we are having conflicts that is going to have a negative frame. So how to get that negative frame into positive frame is the biggest challenge. And that is where Gandhi's nonviolent communication comes into play. And that is something very, very important aspect of it. So in that context, Gandhi's nonviolent communication has a very, very important aspect in this of resolution of disputes. Yes, please. <clears throat> Anyone else, please? Uh, hello, sir. Yes, sir, please. I'm back, sir. My network issues is OK, sir. Okay, so I would like to ask, uh, sir, is there, uh, sir, have you thought about making our online communications uh, more non-violent? In the sense, uh, these days, as I've told earlier, we have um, relied, we have relying on our uh, on various social media platforms. So mm -hmm. uh, what do you think on those lines? Yes, so I even think our I... chats or audio messages and and even our calls and also uh, in YouTube and other Instagram such profiles. What do you think, sir? Even the com comment session when, when you find that there are a lot mm -hmm. of people uh, in the same way as we communicate with other people in person, they they raise their voice and they it's kind of a havoc there. So what do you think, sir, on those uh, lines? How can we uh, yes, communicate yes, yes. better? You see, that is the biggest challenge, not just for uh, all of us, but for the whole global community. Because with the whole expansion of the social media and the online technologies, uh, we are living in a hyper technological era. In that context, you see, you will find such a huge explosion of issues of hate speech, uh, you know, and intolerance and uh, uh, trolling and so on and so forth. 
In fact, only the other day we were talking on how we can promote, uh, you know, the whole area of, uh, you know, peace motivators or as a counter to some of these negative tendencies over the online media. So when we are used, basically the whole idea is to how to develop a counter narrative, counter things to them. So if someone is being very, very aggressive over the online media, it doesn't mean that I also will be. I need to ensure that I ensure that I will be using those strategies of non-violent communication to respond to those issues. These are big problems. Simply, that I, in fact, there is uh, this friends of mine who are teaching in the university in Spain, and they are doing a very amazing uh, research on how uh, the trolling of women uh, vis a vis uh, the Twitter. So there are different aspects, different complex things. But here, the thing is that a. In fact, I remember the very senior guardian, Mr. Nakwa Thakkar. He said the biggest challenge before communicator edu communication ed educators in today's world is uh, how uh, they, uh, we uh, get over the whole issues of what we are talking about, hatred and this and that. The whole idea he says is that we need to be promotion of digital literacy, how we important of importance of media and digital literacy, importance of imbibing the whole ideas of non-violent communication right from a young age, and also seeing how we can have a whole group of non-violent communicators in online sphere to be able to respond to that. Of course, governments and uh, international bodies like the UN, they have come up with this whole plan of action strategy and plan of action against these things. These are all there. But of course, this is a serious problem which needs a regular intervention by different people at different places. So we as students possibly could uh, not only inculcate these values of non-violence and non-violent communication, but also inspire others, also enhance our own uh, digital literacy and media literacy so that we can be able to respond to these online issues and then try to work on those lines. Of course, the challenge is very complex and I agree to that. Yes, please. Any other points, please? Sir? Yes, please. Can you point out some methods through which introverts can express themselves in these online platforms? I mean, since everything has changed online, a lot of people are reclusive and are not able to communicate themselves. And as a result, they may have a lot of depression and a lot of other internal dilemmas. So how can we overcome those problems? I think, in fact, that is again a very important issue when we are talking of dep depression, anxiety, and uh, issues of uh, mental health issues especially during this pandemic, because we are not able to socialize. We are not able to go out in many ways. Of course, the situation is getting better and better, but the thing is that it is not a normal situation. So it is not just you who is asking this question. There are so many of them who are talking about this whole issues of, uh, you know, mental health issues and uh, depression and anxiety. What is important is that how we can continue our, you know, Communication, of course, when we are talking of the digital form of communication, you know, possibly it is very, very, you know, frozen kind of a thing. You know, it is not a heart to heart communication. If I'm meeting you in physical, there is more heart to heart, soul to soul communication. But in the online mode, it looks very frozen. It is very, you know, there is no emotions, there is nothing like that. So, in that, of course, given that particular fact, but how you can fight, how you are able to, it's important that, say, for instance, in this session, like uh, we, uh, the, how how people say possibly to an introvert, the, how, how we can engage them, that is something which is your fourteen in point. We have classrooms, say, going on 30, uh, say 50, 60, 70 students, so hardly few people talking. So, of course, that is a big issue. But how uh, possibly the teachers or your friends who are, you know, know you that you are introvert. How they can engage with you? Give a call. Uh, you know, talk over on different issues. Try to you know pop up, step up the whole situation. I think those are the areas in which we need to work. It will have to be 
at not just at the individual level, but also at the level of the educational institution and also at the friends level. If some friend feels the other person seems to be depressed or having some anxiety, it is our job, it is our responsibility to reach out back to that person and try to find some succor for that person. We should not let the other person, you know, further uh, move down downwards in their anxiety or depression. That is something very important. So this is the way I think we can, you know, solve the issue in some way or the other. Yes, yes thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. So in fact, uh, I would request uh, like when we have this session, before we have this uh, next session on non-violent communication, I would like to uh, know our uh, colleague, Mr. Pankaj, who is the technical head, who has just shared that link of uh, our course on non-violent communication. It's a very simple course. Uh, it can be done in two days, three days time, and there is no, uh, you have to just go through it and you will find some seven reflective exercises at the end of the course. And you can just uh, uh, answer to those reflective exercises and all of you get a certificate. But most importantly, you are able to, you know, uh, get a good understanding of what is nonviolent communication and how you can use it in your daily lives, basically, whether in time to conflicts, whether in terms of anger management, but if you're stressed out, how you can do. So it gives a very rudimentary exposure to the whole idea. And then, of course, when we have the session, we can talk further in details on that. In fact, for your information, more than lakh uh, participants have already done this course. It is available in English, Hindi, uh, Tamil, Malayalam, uh, and uh, Gujarati, and Manipuri. And also, we have done it internationally. Yes, please. So I possibly if there are any more questions, we can take one more question or we request uh, uh, Jevin to finish the program. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else? Are there any more questions? So I think we can. I will go ahead, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, no program is complete without expressing gratitude. Now we have Alina Mary with us to deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. The essence of all beautiful art, all great art, is gratitude, said Frederick Nietzsche. Now, as we've come to the end of this wonderful workshop, it's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks to each one of you who've gathered here. Let me begin by giving glory to God Almighty for letting us join together and making today's workshop profound and effective. Next, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the speaker of the day, Dr. Vedabhyas Kundu, for taking a really informative session. Sir, from your class, we've all understood the importance of peer mediation and what all are the important characteristics that we as a mediator must possess. And I'm sure that each one of us could become good mediators who can understand, respect and appreciate others and thereby resolve conflicts and bring about happiness and peace in our surroundings. Thank you, sir, for your valuable words. I also thank the Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samiti, New Delhi, for associating with the Gandhian Peace and Nonviolent Studies Center of St. Teresa's College, Ernakulam, to organize this webinar. Next, I would like to thank Dr. Latha Nairaj, the convener of the program and head of the Department of English, and Dr. Preeti Kumar, the coordinator of the program and associate professor of the English Department. Thank you, dear teachers, for your supervision and support. Last, but not the least, I would like to place my hearty thanks to all the participants of today's session. Once again, thank you all and have a great day ahead. Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I really hope all of you would take the whole initiative forward. That is the key. <laughs> that is the key.